No, I'm not on Copperhead Road, but I am truck shell camping in a cornfield. In this video, I'll show you around my camp. I'll show you my recent upgrade to my battery box. Basically, I switched to lithium batteries. I'll also use that battery box to power my Chinese diesel heater. It's supposed to get down to around 20 degrees tonight, so I should have no problem staying nice, cozy, and warm. And I also plan on taking a hot truck shell shower in freezing temperatures. So stick around, we'll see how it turns out. I don't hear banjo music, that's a good sign. Come on, Zoe. Come on. Zoe's about 12 years old now. She does great. She still likes to play and she walks every day around six o'clock she normally gets to go on a walk so the closer it gets to six o'clock she gets a little antsy and she's ready to go do something go see something so that's what we're doing I've seen signs of deer all over the place. I know that one or two people might hunt down here and there are plenty of deer that hang out around here. Also, I was told there are quite a few coyote that come out at night. So we might hear something tonight. Once the sun goes down, the coyote come out. I thought I might set up a canopy or tarp even though it's not supposed to rain, but it's so windy today. I think I'll just take advantage of this deer blind sitting here. And if I want a little bit of uh, protection from the wind or whatever, I can always hang out in there for a little while. I might end up cooking in here. That would make things so much easier. I built this battery box a couple years ago and it's worked out great so far but it was always heavy I used an old wet cell battery I had in my camper and that thing just weighed a ton plus I couldn't really have this inside of the camper shell the same time I was in there sleeping or anything because of the fumes a wet cell battery gives off so I started looking online and watching prices prices came down on lithium batteries I ended up purchasing this 100 amp hour zooms brand battery had good reviews for what it is, uh, pretty good features. The thing weighs 24 pounds. It's so much lighter, it's so much easier to move around than that old battery was. Plus now I can keep this inside of the uh, camper shell while I'm sleeping and don't have to worry about getting sick or anything. Um, this stays charged, it seems like, forever compared to the other one. Most camping trips I go on are, you know, a couple nights. You know, sometimes I camp longer if I need to top this thing off, I have a 100 watt solar panel and a solar charging station I can use. 
for the most part, I don't even have to worry about recharging this. It runs everything I have and it runs that diesel heater great. So at the time I purchased this, it was $319 on Amazon. And now I look the other day, it's back up over 400 bucks. So I'm glad I bought it when I did and it's worked out great. Well, Zoe pretty much ended up being soaked. So luckily I had a place where I could take her. She will be a lot more comfortable and get dried off a lot quicker than the back of my uh, truck there. So uh, right now uh, it's, it's already below freezing. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up that diesel heater. I've got a couple videos. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out my diesel heater build and, and how I uh, hook it up here on the truck. But um, I'll go ahead and get that set up and see if I can get that truck shell heated up a little bit. Since I know there's not going to be any rain, I'm not worried about leaving this set on the tailgate like this without a canopy over top. If I knew it was going to rain or snow, I would have a tarp over this or I would have it sitting underneath the uh, tailgate or protected in some way. Um, I have some flexible hose, three inch hose, like dryer hose or vent hose that I can run from uh, a different location up to the uh, panel back here. But tonight I know I'm safe leaving it back here on the tailgate and this is the easiest, most efficient way to use this thing really. For the shower later. Well, that's what that shower pan looks like sitting in the back of this truck shell. It fits in there perfect. I hook the drain hose up right here. It runs out the back of the tailgate. I basically sit on that little portable stool. I've got a shower curtain that Velcros to the pan and also hooks to the ceiling of the truck shell. Absolutely nothing will get wet. I'm going to heat up some water, get the temperature just right in my little portable pump shower and end up with a fully functional truck shell shower. I do have a video posted showing more details step by step on how I built this and put it all together. If you're interested you can check it out. Okay the sun is definitely down now. The temperature has dropped down significantly. I've got a little Coleman lantern just lighting up the campsite temporarily. Um, I've got this LED lights inside the truck shell. Those things are pretty cool. They pull very little power and light it up nice. Diesel heater is running great. I think it's around, I don't know, close to 25 or so out here right now. And the inside of the truck shell is starting to warm up nice. Well, it feels great inside this truck shell right now. We are in the middle of March and in the Carolinas, you just never know what kind of weather you're going to get this time of the year. The other day it was around 80 degrees outside and now it is 22.5 degrees outside and it is falling. It is definitely going to be in the teens tonight. I have that diesel heater set on the lowest manual setting right now. I think it's 1.5 hertz. So it's just sipping the fuel, not taking much energy at all. And I have very little insulation in this truck. A little bit of carpet, some of this reflectix material here and there. And right now it is 74.6 degrees in here. Feels great. We're going to make tonight's meal really quick and simple and easy. I've got some beef stew I'm going to heat up. I'm going to use my little backpacking stove that I use when I cook inside the truck shell.
Okay, just as promised, I am going to take a shower on the inside of this truck shell while it is 21.3 degrees outside. I don't know if you can see this, but it is 21.3 outside, 74 inside. The way I do this is really simple. The setup is uh, quick and there's nothing to it really. It's just too cramped in here really to video it. I do have other videos posted showing in detail how I set this all up if you're interested. So what I'm going to do first is heat up some water and add it to this cool water inside this pump shower. Get it to hopefully a very warm comfortable temperature and get started. Ooh, yeah. Careful, careful, careful. It is very hot. Okay, I normally have this totally enclosed in the front, but I'm gonna leave it the front open and just be careful not to splash water everywhere. And um, that way I can video from the neck up, if that's okay with you, and I'm sure it is. Let's get started. <laughs> hey, I think I got the water just right. Not too hot, not too cold. So that's how you take a truck shell shower when it's 19 degrees outside. Nothing to it. Good morning everyone. I slept great last night. At one time I woke up and it was down to 15 degrees outside. That's pretty chilly for the middle of February here in the Carolinas. But the diesel heater did a great job. It's been running on low for at least 12 hours now and it's used less than a half of a gallon of fuel. So that heater's done a great job. That's going to about wrap it up for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, Maybe give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.